Good evening, everyone. First off, can everybody hear me really well? Please raise yeah. your hand. Let me know. Good. Good. That's fine. All righty. Uh, this is Reverend Greg Keene. We're doing another show here. We're going to have a good time. And we're broadcasting from Lowydale. We got here a week or so ago from Florida, and we're back at home in Lowydale. And we'll be broadcasting tonight the, uh, the uh, class. So we're going to have a lot of fun with this. And uh, good to see some new faces. Good to see some old faces. So it's nice to see you here. And I'm glad you came. <clears throat> Those of you that are not on camera, if you want to be on camera, please do. Because there will be some things I'm going to ask people as we're going along. And you can wave your hand and say hello or uh, ask if there's a question. I'll have people raise their hand at a later time. So if you can be on camera, that'd be just fine too. All righty. Now on my website, I have the classes for the summer and we have two days in the summer and I believe it's 15th and 16th uh, for the class for medium. 17th, summer. Hmm? 16th and 17th. 16th and 17th of July. We'll be doing the uh, mediumship class. We'll be in the assembly hall. Uh, you can sign up for that. It's only going to be in person. It's not going to be on the internet. And it'll work very nicely that way. We'll get to have a firsthand experience. And I love doing that. I think it's something that's really having a big impact on people because they really realize what they can do personally, what they can experience personally. I hope there's a lot of you that will make the opportunity here in your lives to be able to come up to Lloydell this summer. Everything up here should be functioning just about normal. I'll put it the new normal, you know, the new normal in a sense of how they're going to do and what they're going to do and all these things. So I want to say we're going to have all the classes going. We'll have the outdoor services going. I believe the Healing Temple is going to be going also. I'm not sure of the guidelines or rules for the Healing Temple. I'm not sure if they're doing fully laying off hands or not, but I know it'll be open. It'll be up and running. We're going to have a staff in the cafeteria. We're going to have the Octagon building, which is going to be a little breakfast restaurant. So there's quite a few things happening here that I want to say, certainly coming back to what you could term normal and look forward to seeing everybody here for the summer. <clears throat> Now, we haven't got any emails. If you guys have any, any questions that would pertain to mediumship or pertain to spirituality, please go ahead and email us. And my wife will read them. Le Leslie will read them. And we can then go over them. And I can explain what I'm feeling and knowing about them. All right? We didn't get any ahead of time. So if you want to do that, that's just fine. All righty. <clears throat> I think we have people from uh, all over the place here. This is wonderful. Good, good energy. Now, what I'd like to start with is uh, the basics of what's coming up here in the near future. I know we've gone through the pandemic and that craziness and we're now winding that down. I mean, that's really becoming something that we can deal with more normally and it's gonna be a lot calmer. I just feel more at peace emotionally. <clears throat> I really feel by midsummer there's going to be pretty close to normalcy in a sense of how we're functioning and what we're doing. So I think that'll be wonderful. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's going to give us an opportunity to function normally. That'll be great. I know there's so many people that have really been uh, restricted and held back in many ways. And I could see this opening up more now that that's going to be wonderful to have happen. I've uh, been looking at different things like when we're in Florida and down there, everything is really back to normal besides wear a mask here and there and some of the places they require it, some don't. And up here, they're just starting to shift things a little bit with that. When we first got here, we had checked on all the rules in the sense of what you can do and can't do. So it's been interesting. They're, they're starting reaching a point here now of reducing the restrictions on the mask and different things that way. So we'll see what happens. I hope everybody stays healthy and has been healthy. And we'll start with a, a few things I've been feeling. And one of them would be the fact that we're going to have a lot going on very shortly with the world and the economy. And I have made mention of this in the past. There's a few of you I'm sure have been aware of that. But I feel we're going to have a lot happening in the economy. And people are going to have to really awaken the idea of what are we doing now to prepare for 
what's coming up with the economy and the different events that are going to occur. You know, while I was in Florida, I wanted to build a little platform in my car for things for traveling. And I checked on a play, um, a sheet of plywood and how ridiculous the price was. I mean, I used to buy the plywood for like eight ninety nine, and now it's $46. And I really don't see the shortage they're trying to, trying to claim. I really feel we're going to have to look at things a little further ahead. I grew up on a farm environment. We always planned ahead, canned food ahead, had everything really stocked up ahead of time. And I would suggest to everyone that within a few months to a year, we need to be doing that and thinking about that for the things that are necessary and what we're needing to have in our lives right at hand. Because I do believe there's going to be shortages. And I would say most of the shortages are just based on greed and manipulation. They're not really based on an absolute shortage. So let's be thoughtful about our lives because I know so many people, you know, day to day, they go to the store and get what they need for the next day. And we're needing to think ahead further or there's going to be some real, real heartaches over that. So let's be aware of that. Not to sound negative about things. I just feel very positive that we're aware of it and we can prepare ahead of time and organize things in a manner that will go along just fine. <clears throat> You know, I see ads on the TV and the radio that, you know, the interest rates are going up and all these different things that are happening. I believe that's happening, but I also believe that right now, everything has gone so high in so many areas that it's right now, you know, a seller's market in many ways. But I feel that's going to really reverse itself and it's going to hurt a lot of people that have gone over the top on purchasing and buying in a sense of properties and different things like that or different investments. So let's be alert to that and think that over more and just have that awareness. The other energy I was feeling also uh, with this whole COVID thing going on, I do believe it's calming down and it's actually becoming a great deal better. And it's gonna be a great deal better. I don't feel negative with it. I just see it as taking time for that to work better and be in a calmer energy. So we're gonna be more at peace with that as time goes on. And I believe the health of the uh, nation, let's say is gonna be improving. Now on a spiritual level, I was thinking about Lloydale before we get up here. And last year there was probably 24 people that really kept everything going here. And we had the 10 week season and all the outdoor services and the auditorium and everything was up and running and functional. And we had a lot of new people uh, I've been here a long time as a working medium in Lloydale. I have gave messages at Inspiration Stump when I was eight years old. And at this point, I'm 68 years old. So I've been here a little while. But I find that the change of energy, we had so many new people that I would have not seen before in the Dale and at the services. And new people understanding. There's a real wave of people reaching out now to understand mediumship, to understand their own spirituality, their own kind of closeness and understanding of God. All these things are opening up more and are gonna get stronger yet. And it's really a wonderful energy because I think it's a great feeling to know that people are really awakening. And in the pandemic, I think to, to a degree, it made a lot of people stop, look and listen. You know, it's making us awaken and look at our lives and say, where are we investing our time, energy, love and emotions? But I also feel now we're in a transition where those who have really chose to awaken are awakening. There's no question. And there's, there's other people out there that are just want to ignore this, get past it as quickly as possible, and just go rambling on with the way they live and the way they think and the things they're doing. And I feel an energy that we're going to have quite a conflict in the world in the near future because I believe and have seen the narcissistic energy coming out in the manipulations and power plays and different ways in the world around us at whatever level, it doesn't matter what level it's in, I've been watching that occur. And we're needing to be very aware of the idea that we are turning on and opening up to our intuitive ability, because I believe we all have a wonderful gift and ability to do that. It's just that at times we don't allow ourselves to trust what we're feeling, we try to go with the analytical, or we're affected by the analytical statements people are making, or shows and TV and news, all these things coming out. And we're needing to really anchor ourselves in what we're really feeling at a deep level. 
And when I say what we're feeling, not the emotional of the consciousness, I'm talking the spirituality of feeling spirit, knowing God's guidance, recognizing that they're there for us all the time, every day, 24 hours, without question. You know, I have guides around me that I've had since childhood. I've also had guides come into my life that have periodically been in my life and sometimes step out. I believe all of us, whether we understand our guides or are aware of our, our guides or not, they're there and they're helping us all the time. And we're needing to slow ourselves down a little bit because in some levels, there's a lot of us has slowed down with the pandemic and regrouped, just regained a better balance. And now I wanna say, let's not get back out there in the conscious world and get all the crazy energy going and live in or be a part of all the dramas that are occurring, because we certainly have enough dramas going on in the world. <clears throat> you know, I had a gentleman say to me one time, you know, he was worried about the war over in Palestine and all the things happening and how many years this has gone on. And I said to him, I said, you know, we as souls have a choice to make and those souls have a choice to make whether they're gonna to continue to live in the chaotic energy they've been in and continue to have ceasefires and back to war and back to bombing and they keep going back and forth, it's a choice they're making. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I believe very much at a soul level we're blessed to be in the United States. We're blessed to have the harmony we do have here, even though I'm sure there's a lot of people wouldn't agree with things and wh what it's done, how it's done. But I do feel we have a wonderful, wonderful energy. And I feel the opportunity for it to even be better yet. <coughs> Excuse me. I look at all the things going on in the world around us and the events that are occurring. You know, we hear about things on the news. We have the ability to know things around the world so quickly. I mean, within an hour, we can know things that happen in other parts of the world that in the past you'd have never known about and probably not even heard about later. So it's like, look at all these things bombarding us. And for us to be in that calm space and understand we send healing and bring balance and harmony to the circumstance we hear about and the events that are occurring, that's going to make a huge difference. And I look at things like Lollydale, you know, it's a spiritual place. And I hope all of you get to see and be involved here at one point in the future and be able to enjoy the energy because Lollydale has a wonderful healing energy. And I feel the healing energy has been here <clears throat> the whole, the whole, the whole years. This is, this has been here. And I feel the vortex of energy here is wonderful. And I hope everyone gets to come participate in it. Now the hotel will be open, all the events will be open. So we're gonna have a fun time this summer. It should be really good. Now, I do have uh, some people that would like to ask questions. And what I'd like to do is someone that has a spiritual question. If you have a spiritual question, I don't wanna be doing private readings. Uh, private readings is something if you wanna call, make an appointment, I read for people that way, but I can't take up everybody's time on the air here and do readings for people that pertain to their private life. But if you have experiences you don't understand or you have something happening in your mediumship or healing, uh, please raise your hand and ask the question and we'll, we'll get you on and you can ask the question. <coughs> Anyone have a question now? Hi, Chris. Um, hi there, uh, Chris Wan, Chris P here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, the question is that sometimes I, it's not like personal to me because I'm sure a lot of other people dream this way, um, but a dream will come or, or several dreams will come that um, suggest that I uh, have been in, in different environments, in different mm -hmm. lives. <clears throat> Um, in different settings, not not um, way in the past, 
not way in the future, as I know, but coincident with this one. I, am I making any sense to you? Yes, you are. I really feel with you that you step out of the body quite often, and some of your dreams are actually in astral travel, and you're experiencing other dimensions, and the dimensions are not just identical to the Earth plane. You may be experiencing other experiences in other dimensions. And I feel to have them come through in memory in our conscious awake, that's really amazing because a lot of people have it happen, but they're not always remembering it. And you've been having some events that you'll remember. And I feel that you're actually stepping out on an astral level and you're experiencing other dimensional connections. Your guides are helping you reach that. Your guides are bringing you there. You know, I referred to it when I was a child that I've had an entity that come to me and my grandmother, we, we lived in a farmhouse and my grandmother slept on the other side of the bedroom. And she would watch the entity come and take me by my hand and I'd step out of the body and go with them. And when I'd come back, she'd come over and sit on the edge of the bed and she'd put her hand on my chest and she'd say, Greg, just relax. You're okay. You're back. What <laughs> yeah. do you remember? And I'd explain where I was, what I experienced, what I had seen. And she said to me that this is different dimensions that I've been stepping into. I feel you're doing the same thing. Is it, is it possible that an individual, not just me, but I mean, for all of us, I didn't want to personalize it really, um, have more than <clears> one <throat> lifetime going on? In a I, I, honestly, I honestly believe that's very possible. I have seen circumstances where I felt it has happened. I, I couldn't say necessarily all of us, literally everyone, but I do feel that there's individuals that are, have things going on, even on other parts of the planet, and mm -hmm. I have seen that occur. And I've also seen it occur where they're in other dimensional levels functioning also. Okay, thank you. I, I really believe that happens. I have been places when my guide would take me places and I would see events and I would see things going on there that it wasn't another country, it was another world. Mm -hmm. And I would witness all these events occurring and I'd come back with a memory of them. And a lot of times it would be a guidance to me and a lesson to me as to how to handle the earth plane and how to deal with things on the earth plane and how they over there in some other dimensional level has dealt with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um... Thank you. It, at the very least, it, it kind of teaches that this isn't the only show in town. Oh, we're not the only show in town, believe no, me. No, that there's many, many other things going on and therefore not to get too terribly invested in any of the way highs or way lows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, let me say it in this term. Uh, we may have some people in the air here with us that may not uh, believe this or be completely accepting of it. But I believe we function in so many dimensions in other levels at the same time. And I have entities that come to me that I would term, quote, spirit. And these are loved ones that come to me and help me guide me. They could be family. They could be guides. They could be teachers. You know, whatever title you want to put on it, they're there for us. But I also believe that we've had entities come in. I have an entity that when I was a young child, that he would come to me and stand by the bed, and he'd ask me to go with him. He said, I want to show you, I want to show you. And he would take me out through the stars, and I would go through the stars at great distances and pass many, many planets when I was a little kid. And I'd come back, and again, my grandmother knew and recognized what was going on. Now, I learned to understand that was an extraterrestrial energy, and I refer to them as spirit also because they're not in our conscious realm, you know, in a sense of saying this is where they live. Mm -hmm. But they have the ability to reach us, help us, guide us. And I see some people that have some very negative beliefs about things being negative about extraterrestrial energy. Well, I mm -hmm. think everybody would be just blown away with the fact as to how involved they are on the earth plane and how many people they work with and touch, help, guide, and uplift, and that they've actually helped us in wars where we have not had, um, you know, the war reach the degree that it could have. I remember my dad telling me when I was just a little kid, we talked about UFOs. He was in World War II. 
he was aboard a battleship and he was expendable. The whole ship was expendable. And he was he was watching the planes fly in. They were kamikaze and hitting hitting the deck of the plane and tearing the deck open. And they went through hell there with that. And he said, I watched the UFOs watching us. And there were many, many men on the deck of that boat that could see that. Your father's and, Yes. And okay, it's, I didn't know he was also mediumistic. Yes. Well, he was he was seeing these things. And my father was a very stoic man. And he was full blooded German, very, very staunch, quiet man didn't say a lot. But when he said it, he meant it. And he explained to me the different events that occurred that he'd seen with his own eyes, the UFOs and what was going on. And that was in high levels of battle in World War Two. <clears throat> you know, and I look at it as something that they're with us, they're around us, they're helping us. I would say it in this form, in many levels, they kept they kept us from blowing ourselves up in many ways. And I feel there's a certain level of protection they've given us and guidance they've given us that many people are just completely oblivious to. And mm -hmm. I have to laugh at some of the things that our governments do to supposedly cover up things. And then on the other hand, they're using technology they have found out and figured out and re-engineered that they've come up with technology they claim they've done, which I really don't believe all that. I think it's something there that they were, mm -hmm. they were using technology that was, that was found. Mm -hmm. hmm. Wow. Thank you. That's uh, it's a big topic area. Oh yeah. Huge, huge. There was some military official um, who quoted that, some some experience he had led him to believe that whatever he saw or found was at at least hundreds maybe a thousand years ahead of us and i wonder how can you even estimate that that but anyway it, it was you know an official <clears throat> representing the military and i guess they're beginning to open up a little bit now well i think there's enough people that have been in the military that have been involved in witnessing or being involved in uh, dissecting and taking care of things there to say what it is and how it is. I mean, they have different metals that they never had before. Mm -hmm. And they've had different things with, uh, let, let's say, directional ability that I know that they're utilizing. And mm -hmm. also the stealth bombers and things like that. There's a whole bunch of stuff that I feel a great deal of that would be something that man didn't come up with it on their own. But uh, it'll be interesting. Yeah, they can do by location also. Okay. <clears throat> well, if you think about it, I forget the name of the ship, but they actually worked with uh, moving a ship from one harbor to another. It disappeared in one harbor and, re and reappeared in the other harbor, harbor. And there were people literally buried in the metal in the ship that had been aboard the ship when it rematerialized. Yeah. And that's well documented. That's something there that's very well documented. So if you see things like that, you know, I mean, there's realities that mankind has played with for a long time. And I'm sure secretively they do a lot of things that they're just not admitting to. Thank you. I know there's others who, who want to speak, but thank you very much. You're welcome. Do we have someone else who'd like to ask a question? Yes, Janet. Hi, Janet. Janet. Hello, Janet. Unmute it. Um, I had a question about spirit lights. Um, sometimes when I see spirit, I only see like little little lights. <clears throat> how would you know if they're um, of a positive nature or a negative nature? Well, let's start out with it this way. Haven't you had a wonderful thought and belief asking them to come to you in a way that you may un you may understand? Mm hmm. Yes. And haven't you had the thought of doing this in the light and it's the most positive thought you have? Right. You're already clearing the way for that. And it's not something you need to be afraid of. And I always ask a blessing before I started the show tonight, we do the class tonight. I always send out a thought and prayer. I've gotten so used to it that, you know, it's something I do so automatically. And if you just put out that thought and prayer before you start with what you're doing, it then is you're channeling a positive energy in a positive way, you know, and I've heard some people say, well, is, is this of God? And I want to say spirit is God. 
and spirit is moving in many ways to show us things, guide us with things and help us. And for you to see the lights and you've already put out the intent and energy asking for them, you know, certainly you're doing it in the light. Okay. And they're, they're going to come to you in that manner. And what you need to do with it then is put out the thought and say, can you share a message with me in a way that I may consciously understand that may be something to validate my understandings or teach me something. And as we do that, that's going to make a huge difference for you to be more at peace with that and know that they're right there with you. Also, would you recognize you've had an experience of seeing orbs? Yes. Because I see orbs around you as we're talking. And I feel the energy there that you have spirit loved ones that come in in an orb form, which is a symbol of light. And when you're on the spirit side, you are energy and you're a light. It's not a body like we have here on the earth plane. And I feel some of the lights you're seeing are loved ones that you have in spirit that are coming to you to show you that, hey, you're not alone. We're with you and we love you and we watch over you. Okay. And for you to experience it in your, let's say, quiet time or you could term meditative time, when you're in that quiet space, I would like to say, uh, say to you, practice this. Put out the thought to spirit that please come to me in a way that I may recognize easily, be it a light, be it an orb, be it whatever form that would be something you're noticing. And to ask them to come to you in a way that you could harmonize with that energy. Now, I've had it happen where I've had students say to me, well, I said, okay, blink twice for no, once for yes. And they'll do that with lights. I have one gentleman that he does a pendulum and I've actually watched it happen where we put a pendulum on a pyramid of sticks that were solidly fastened together. All right. In other words, nothing's moving it. We're not touching a table it's sitting on, nothing. The pendulum would swing so far that it would wrap it itself around one of the supports. Wow. And I know spirit will do this and it's going to be something that as you set up a pattern and you put forth that thought of a pattern for them, they'll start utilizing it. One thing I'll mention that pertains to this, but it's sort of a little more open than that. <clears throat> I had a lady come to me one time and she said, I'm dreaming all kinds of things, but I don't understand what the symbols mean. And I said to her, let's go to the bookstore and look at all the dream books and look at at least two dreams that you've had that are very clear that you remember. And I said, and analyze in each book, both of those dreams. And the book that describes that dream more exact and more accurately as to what it pertains to in your life, get the book. And I said to her, when you bring the book home, I said, meditate with it. I said, when you go to bed at night, put it underneath your pillow and put out the thought to spirit as you go to sleep. Here's the language that I would like you to work with me on. And here's the symbols that I'd like you to use. And I want the messages you're giving me. I want to hear and understand and feel them. But by using the symbols that are in this book, when you show me the symbols, I can look the symbols up for the meaning. Hmm. And she did that and she called me back and she was completely floored with the idea that she had a dream almost immediately that night. And when she dreamt it, they were showing her the book in the dream mm -hmm. and they were showing her the symbols of teaching. So it's something that if we set up the opportunity of a pattern of saying how we're doing this and we're not then questioning the symbols as a language, you know, we'll really get a lot of information. Okay, thank you. Yes, I've worked with it a long time where I'll see symbols at times and I recognize what they are, but I've been doing it for years. And those of you that at times will have symbols like that, go check it out. Look at some, you know, if you have one of the uh, stores that have the dream books, go look at that and analyze at least two dreams, three dreams, and see which one really describes a dream pertaining to life. And I think it'll be amazing then what you're going to come up with. Okay, I'll try it. Thank you. <clears throat> you're welcome. Uh, Leah, 
Leah? Hello, Leah. Hello. I just had a quick question on life contracts. And um, before, you know, you come into a body form, is your life contract arranged before you come in? Or is it like rearranged in your sleep patterns as you <clears throat> age? I mean, at what point is there a particular point you're destined to leave your body or... How is that um, arranged? Well, that's quite a few questions at once, but we'll start with the first one. <clears throat> when we come into the earth plane, we mm -hmm. definitely have chosen lessons we're coming in for, things we're here to grow and understand and learn from, and it's something very important to do so. And we as a soul have chosen this. Now, when we enter the earth plane, we have this little thing called free will added in and given to us. When we step into the body, we have what you term free will. Well, free will, uh, we can be bad little kids at times in the sense of saying, well, I know these lessons are here, but how can I get around this or avoid this or, you know, basically not face it? And we have that free will and we start avoiding things and ignoring things. And that's where you see the narcissistic attitude and tendencies. You see people that are manipulative and actors, you know, they present what they are finding acceptable and then they do what they want to. Well, I believe that at a soul level, the only ones we're hurting is ourselves if we were to do that. And when we step into the earth plane, we already have a list of things that we're here to learn, grow and progress in. And experientially, we can make a mountain out of it or we can make a speed bump out of it. And I've seen people that live in drama and they have continuous drama all the time and they keep avoiding everything they can possibly avoid. But what really I find strange is it keeps looping back and looping back and looping back. And they have the lesson over and over and over and over. And they may ignore it over and over and over, but one day it's going to catch up to them and they're going to have to deal with it. And I believe that the, the severity of the lesson increases the more we avoid it and the more we ignore it. It's going to increase and it's going to become more severe until we accept learning it. And I refer to it as a mountain or a speed bump, meaning my grandmother always told me when I was a child, I'd get upset over something occurring or someone treating me in a certain way. I was a kid in school that I got picked on at times. And she said to me, she said, I want to be able to look at what happened and learn from it. I want to accept what occurred there and why it occurred there, whether it is something you're wanting to blame someone else or whether we're looking at it and realizing what did we do, all right? And I looked at people's choice of ignorance and choice of manipulation and being abusive and I would not want to be in their shoes because one day, karmically, those things are going to come back on them and come back on them very severely. Mm -hmm. And for you to be aware of the idea that we don't have, I don't believe, now this is my belief, I don't believe that we have a set time of leaving the earth plane in a sense of a day and a date. I believe we have experiences we're learning and the more accepting we are of learning and moving through them smoothly and easily, you know, and the psalm aren't so easy, but moving through them smoothly and easily, we're going to have the harmony and the calmness that we're here spiritually and we can enjoy our lives, have a peaceful, wonderful life, and it can be very fulfilling. And it's not a circumstance that has to be something that is harmful and negative. And it's our choice. If we look at things in a way of how do we run from it and we're afraid of it and we push it away and ignore it, it's just going to keep rolling back at us. It's like trying to push a rock uphill. It's going to roll back on us every time. <clears throat> and I believe that I've seen people that they changed how they were believing and doing things, stepped from a disharmonious life to a certainly a more harmonious life and accepted and learned lessons and they were here in a really harmonious manner. But the people that are choosing to basically ignore and manipulate whatever they can in whatever way they can, 
Uh, look at the energy and time and love and emotions they're spending on maneuvering and manipulating continuously. And they're always having to maneuver something else or manipulate something else. And it just never ends. They just keep going that way. I know some people personally that are in spirit now, and I watch the turmoil they chose to live in and create, and they're gone. And they're very young. I mean, these people weren't that old, but they had the attitude that the laws and rules of the world do not apply to me. I can get away with whatever I want to in whatever way I want to. And because they approached it in that form, it just completely backfired on them. And it was all their own destruction. It wasn't anybody doing anything to them but them. Mm -hmm. I, I just had a quick question. Um, I have a neighbor who is married like 64 years or so. And um, her husband, she left to go uh, to visit somebody on the weekend, came back and he had passed while she was gone. And she was so devastated that he would have passed, you know, without her being able to say goodbye, without her being, it, was, it just seemed like she had no idea that he was going to pass. And I was just wondering, like, if there's any words of comfort you can give to somebody, like if you've spent your whole lifetime together, it seems like he just kind of snuck out on her, you know what I mean? And <clears throat> I know that she's feeling really bad, but I, I don't know how to explain that type of event because in her mind, they would have been together and then he would have like passed with her with her at the side, but she got called away for a family obligation. Well, so the, the, the energy, the energy I feel there, he'd have had a very difficult time leaving if she was present around him all the time. The mm -hmm. life energy would be like a battery and she'd be like jumping his battery and keeping his energy going if she was right there. Mm -hmm. And for him to leave, he needed to wind it down and let his energy let go instead of having someone else's energy supporting it. And oh. I feel it was meant to be, it was just plain meant to be. And it was a blessing for him and her because I really felt when he left, he left very gently. I felt an energy with him. He went peacefully. I didn't see a big trauma. And I felt very comfortable that he did not have a lot of pain or you know, what I term a suffering energy. He just left. And she needs to look at the idea that God blessed him with the ability to leave without going through months or years of illnesses and having all kinds of horrendous things occur in health. Mm -hmm. And she needed to look at it that she'll one day be with him and that she'll go on the spirit side also. We're all going to do that one day. But it's something that she'll be with him and he's over there preparing and waiting now that when it comes her time in life to make that transition it'll be a peaceful transition for her also and he's praying for her and asking god to help her in a way that when she does go that she can he that she can go as peacefully as he had because he actually went quite peacefully yeah yeah okay thank you i think that'll help her god bless you there Thank you. We have another question. Yes, we have uh, one that was sent in on chat. Um, what about electric cars and decreasing dependence on fossil fuels, ecology, save the planet, <clears throat> global warming, and protection of the well-being of Mother Earth? I really feel good about that. And I feel wonderful energy that these things are occurring. I really believe they've been held back at least 40 to 50 years. This is something that could have been done 50 years ago. And it was held back because too many people in an egotistical manner, in a jealous manner, in a money grabbing manner, wanted to manipulate. We've had wonderful breakthroughs for years and years and years that have been put on the shelf and suppressed and held back. Now it's beginning to come out and people are beginning to experience the ability to utilize that. I mean, I know uh, one of my clients said to me, she's gained 56 miles to a gallon out of her Prius. And, you know, they're doing wonderfully. And I see all these things that are brand new things. But remember something, the powers to be in a sense of government and the connections with government with big oil and big oil and, you know, all the gas and everything else. It's all a manipulating energy, manipulative energy, and they don't want to lose their, their flow of energy coming to them. So it's like we keep everybody in the dark and they have to use this and that's all we want them to have. Well, it's now coming out 
and it's starting to come out more and more now. If you look at all the automakers, I would think that most all of the automakers have something electric in their lineup now, even to the point of having some trucks electric. <clears throat> so I really believe the transformation in the world is going to start occurring more and more now. But remember, the money grabbers are trying to make sure they grab on the things they can control. And controlling it would be the electrical ability to run things and handle things. You know, I, I have a, a client of mine that's an interesting man and he's an inventor. And I know that Tesla works through him and helps him. And I know that he receives a lot of guidance as to how to do things with machinery and, and you know, creating things. And I believe Tesla's energy was stolen by the government and taken in hand. And my God, if that was brought out, it is so simplified, it's amazing. And if it was brought out to regular use, the gas companies would be in trouble. The oil companies would be in huge trouble. There would be such a loss of, of revenue in those areas and no need for it. And this is where I really believe that things are being hidden by the people that are having the money and the manipulational power and a lot of political things too, but I think that's all there. Now, I believe very much that people are beginning to really understand and utilize what they can do to have things better. You know, in some areas of the United States even, and I know this for a fact, I've talked to a few people, <clears throat> there's one gentleman out West that he put all the solar panels in his home, on his home, on his buildings, on his barns, and he has everything completely off grid. Now, the, the government of that area, the state of that area, has now charged him taxes because he has solar energy. And they're charging him for having solar energy because they're not making money off the main lines coming in. So here they are now, you know, whether he has any connection to him or not, they're going to go ahead and charge him taxes. And they actually flew over his home and took photographs of all the solar equipment he has and then calculated how much they're going to charge him because he has solar equipment. So if you look at this, there's always somebody out there looking for a free ride and looking for a free buck. And that's how they're going to do it until enough people rebel and recognize that this is something that just basically shouldn't be happening. And that's what I feel is coming up is there's an awakening going on in the world around us and the utilizing of the electric, be it in cars, be it in solar, windmill, whatever form you want to put it in. I really feel that it's going to be choking off the oil and the gas. And it's really going to shake them up a bit coming up here because at this point in time, they're in the heyday on it. But I feel the heyday is going to be squeezed down a little bit tighter as time goes on. And I believe in the other countries where they keep clearing land and clearing land and cutting trees down, it's affecting the whole world. And I feel that they're not aware and understanding of what they're doing. And in many levels don't care. They take care of the moment and that's what they're focused on. And I believe the world is gonna make a shift more now <clears throat> towards what shifts do we need to be making futuristically that would be wonderful shifts. And I think different companies in small ways are picking up on what they can do and what they can participate in. And I think it's great. I really feel that we are on the cusp of changes that even though some people look at it as a very negative time coming, I don't look at it as a negative time. I look at it as a very inventive time and people are really gonna awaken to what we can do more independently, we have functioned so well with big, big, powerful companies. I believe we're going to come to a point of being more in individually independent, individually responsible, individually focused on what we need to do to have things in our lives we really need, and get back a little more simplified on how to deal with things. Yes, use of technology completely, but more simplified that we're more independent. And there's not somebody got their fingers in it making a bunch of money off of it that are just plain manipulative and they're a middleman that they don't need to be there. So that's going to be coming up. And I can see a lot of places getting very shaken up with the idea that they have rolled along in the way they have, believing they can continue this forever. I think that's going to change. I really do.
Any other question? Caroline. <clears throat> Hi, hello, Gregory. Hello, Leslie and all. Um, uh, Gregory, I have been reading a, a book by Daniel Brinkley, who is a man who has died four times. Yeah. And he, because uh, he was recently on the news, I guess he lives in Las Vegas as well as South Carolina. Yeah. Every time that he went back when he died, and this was as an adult, he got different messages of, about his life. And um, mm -hmm. I'm reading one of his books that was written a good years ago or whatnot. And he wrote in it that the way that things are headed now, it was it was a vision that he got when he was in heaven was that Canada, America, Mexico would be one country mm -hmm. if if we don't clean up our act. Also, germ warfare will be used to get rid of anybody that goes against the government. And I mean, these were sort of like, I don't know, revelations or whatnot, but it was something that he had seen when he died either the third or fourth fourth time yeah. he wrote it down in his book mm -hmm. i mean i'm i'm only part of the way through the book but i mean ever since <clears> I, <throat> i've been i've been like oh no <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> let, let me say it this way i don't know the man and i don't know what he had written i have never seen the book or anything but I'm going to give you my take. Okay. What I feel from spirit is the fact that we're going to have a bit of a battle going on between people that have gotten away with hiding and manipulating things for years and years and years, generationally in some families, and they're going to be called on it. And there's going to be a lot more technology brought out. That's going to be wonderful technology that some people actually have a spiritual thought and endeavor on how they want to share it with the world. And that they would try to keep it out of the hands of the powerful manipulative people. And that they would want to bring it into the everyday person and the everyday person can utilize it. So this is going to be coming about. And I understand what you were saying there. And I believe some of that stuff will be happening where there's going to be a lot of, uh, a lot of power plays. But I also feel we are awakening spiritually in a way that we've not wakened up in our in our lifetime. And I would say possibly within two or three lifetimes, people have not woken up like we're going to wake up now. And I see it as a wonderful transition of understanding and belief and utilizing of God's energy and spirit, utilizing the guidance that spirit can give us. And that we're going to start getting back to that level of attunement that we have walked away from and we haven't allowed ourselves to be participating in. I see so many people that have their own little agendas and that's all they focus on, complete self-centeredness. And I believe that that's happening and becoming more aware now that people are seeing it and that's needed. We need to see it. We need to understand that it's happening. There's so many people out there that I believe were so naive in so many ways that had no clue, nor did they even want to look at another way of dealing with it. And now we're being faced with the idea that we have to deal with it differently. And there's no choice then. You have to. Okay, yeah. I think also something that he stated was that when you, to get away from institutions, yeah. whether it's government, religion, whatever is institutionalized is just being forced you right. know, down on you. Right. Then you just become, I don't know, like a zombie or something, but no, I, I and I, I get what you're saying. And um, well, see, that's where I feel the huge institutional energies are running out of energy to manipulate. They're being challenged and questioned in many ways. And I believe this is the real start of those institutional settings being divided and in some levels falling apart because what they have wanted to present or claim is no longer something they can validate. Very good. Thank you. I think it's a good thing. 
and I'm not knocking any belief systems or religions or whatever, but I believe that we're at a point now where we have to get back to the real true basics of trust and love and healing and work with that with each other. And I believe making us stop, look and listen with this pandemic and making us stop, literally stop and evaluate what is in our lives that are truly the important things and what has been in our lives that we created such importance on that should mean absolutely nothing. And that's what we're coming to, is that really down to earth or reevaluating. Yeah, getting back to what matters. Yes, yes. How many families are drawn together more now? How many families have better communication? How many neighbors are helping and caring and communicating when they, before the pandemic, probably didn't even know their neighbor? I see it all the time. So I look at all that energy and I realize that these shifts are occurring and it's not something anybody could ignore. It's happening. All righty. God bless Good. you. Thank you. Any other question? Uh, Bonnie. Hi, Bonnie. Hello. Wow. Um, oops. Uh, Okay. okay. My question. Turn, turn your volume down or something here. I don't know what we're getting a lot of feedback. Okay. My question is um, could you give some guidance or advice about living intention with an intention to connect? I've been kind of struggling to heal a connection to God or to higher power, not just for the purpose of getting messages, but to feel that connection and presence in my life, which I feel <clears throat> will eventually lead to getting messages. But do you well, have any suggestions for an attitude or a prayer or something to, to help with that? Well, I mentioned earlier that I do a little prayer before I start anything I'm doing. If I'm doing a reading or whatever, I always do a prayer. I'll put it in this term. You don't have to use my prayer, but you can set the intent of what you're thinking and doing and desiring and wanting to be able to communicate with. And as you set that intent, you're then going to have the harmony of spirit reaching out to you even more. And as long as we're doing that, it's really on the right track and you're going the right way. Now, the understanding of being closer to God I believe very much that God is around us. Spirits are ordained by God to be with us. We have what you could term guardian angels around us all the time. I believe that they help us in every way. I know myself, as simple as finding a parking spot, I know spirit comes to me and helps me. I can go to the grocery store or Walmart, and there's times it'll hit me. <clears throat> Turn left in this aisle. I go down the aisle, and here's a spot right there. And it's like, there's different ways we're going to be helped and guided. You know, my wife was driving the car one day and we're driving along and it's, it's a new car to us. We traded her old car in and she couldn't figure out how we could get the rear windshield washer to work. And I was sitting there and the thought went through my mind. It's like, can you tell me how to do this? And I heard with a, a, a voice very clearly, push the lever forward. And she pushed it forward and it squirted on the rear window. And it's like, you know, there can be the simplest things that we can be helping, uh, we can be helped by. But it also, re remember it this way. If we're doing something that we can create one little mistake and it creates a whole line of problems, or can we avoid that one little mistake and not create that whole line of problems? And it's a choice we have that ability to do. And if you set that intent, when I wake up in the morning, I always put out the thought of intent. May I learn and understand everything today that I'm here for. Whatever I encounter and deal with, may I deal with it in the highest, most positive manner to bring the highest, most positive good. And I have that thought every morning. I've always set that intent. And a part of that prayer would be asking the harmony with others and to be at peace and harmony with the messages, the guidance, the communication, you put out that energy of intent and thought. 
I would suggest you doing it in the morning when you first wake up. Thank you. Yeah. God bless you there. We have another question. All righty, we're getting close to time here. <clears throat> We've been here uh, really pretty close to an hour now. And if anyone has a last question, that's fine. And what I'm going to do is do a little a little prayer. Dear Father God, in all love and librarians, as we walk our pathway of life, we may accept and understand all obstructions before us. May deal with them in the highest and best way. May we be guided by the hand, the sight, and the understanding. Amen. As I put out that thought in prayer, I want to say, think about that as a part of something you can utilize in your life. Feel free to use those words if you'd like to. And it's something that you can set your own intent in your own manner in events in your life or just when you wake up in the morning and you're putting out that thought in your life today, uh, creating a harmonious energy. I had a lady say to me one time, and she's up in her 90s. And she said to me, she goes, I want to learn, I want to grow, I want to understand, and I want to bless people and help heal them. And she had that intent every morning. And when she put the shingles on her church, and she pounded the nails in her shingles on her church, she was 20 years old. When she died, she was just a hair short of 100. And I grew up in that church. And I used to sit in the back where you have all the pews and I was in the back playing with the dogs, a little kid. And she would do the service. The service is all done. They used to do the healing first and then, then they would do the lecture and then we'd, we'd go into uh, messages and after the messages, then they would close and have a, have a wonderful dinner after church. Well, she'd always say to me in message service, she'd say, Gregory, do you have anything to share? And I'd always put out the intent that if someone was in need, that God would give me a message that I could go to them and share with them. And I was a little kid, and I'd walk up the aisle away from the back, and I'd go to the per person or persons that I would feel things for. I'd give them the message, and I'd go back and play with the dogs. And I find that if we set the intent, and we have that intent there that we're open, we literally will be open when and where and how we need to be, and to not feel any concern about it in a sense of sitting down consciously trying to plan everything. Follow what you're feeling. I've had many events in my life happen that I didn't know why I did what I did or went where I did, but then the events occurred that I was here to help someone and it was a, a really intricate situation that I helped them with and they were fine. And I've had it happen in many, many ways. You know, I died three times when I was 11. I went through the tunnel of light. I had a lot of experiences on the spirit side of life. I had seen huge amounts of events occurring in the world that are still occurring that I still see. So it's something we're here and we're going to experience what we as souls have chosen to. Our soul mind knows and understands exactly why we're here and the events that are occurring. Our conscious mind I referred to is always trying to catch up. We're trying to figure it out. And if we just relax and trust that we're going to be given the information that we're needing to help us that day in those events, we're going to be fine. And we're needing to trust and allow it to occur. Well, listen, we've done the hour and I, I welcome everyone to come to Lilydale. Uh, we're going to be open. It's a wonderful season coming up. I uh, was just out at Inspiration Stump today and had a little meditation out there and gave a couple messages to friends. And I think it's a wonderful energy. So let's enjoy it. God bless you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.